the star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly, so let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Tuesday, May 16th, and so happy for you joining us. And we are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what do we have on this uh, today's wonderful and exciting podcast? We have Pravi in the media, the practical word study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right. So how are you doing, everyone? Monday is officially in the books. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. This week is going by really, really fast. And I hope uh, you guys are reviewing the Sunday messages, going over uh, the different things we need to fix in our life. And uh, this, uh, we're now into the meat of the week. Uh, If you haven't yet, Leave a like, leave a comment, build this community together. Really happy for everyone joining us here every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. Yes, I am loving the Sunday messages recently. I'm loving the Wednesday messages. I'm loving the, you know, the pre dons whatever it is. I hope that everyone, especially this week, our focus is uh, consider absolute faith as life itself, right? That's how big absolute faith is at this time, all right? So, um... Let's get into it. So Monday went by. It's already Tuesday. Super happy to be here uh, meeting all of you on uh, this podcast and hoping you guys have an amazing schedule this week together with the Lord. Uh, Don't forget, I believe the trial is either tomorrow or the day after. I think it's 17th or 18th. I'm trying to remember if it was the 18th in Korea time, right? And uh, the trial will be based on whether they can accept the Netflix audio, which is a pretty tricky situation, I believe, because um, even though we have third party, uh, third party forensics coming in talking about that audio, uh, I'm not sure if they're going to even accept it because it's not done in Korea, which doesn't make sense to me. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit more, maybe not today, but maybe in the weeks after when we find out what happened during the trial uh, this week. So I hope you guys will continue to pray um, pray for the trial, especially tomorrow when it comes to the Netflix audio. And of course, um, uh, let's make sure that... Uh, with this trial, with this trial, we will talk a little bit more about it during uh, probably the media a little bit after. I'll give you some updates and stuff like that too. Uh, Man cave, uh, it is going well. That first video, a lot of people are happy that you actually see our faces, right? So it's recording. You see our faces. Uh, a lot of people are watching it. It seems that man cave is pretty popular. And if you guys, uh, if there's any guys out there who would like to join, go ahead. Just um, DM me or any of the guys you see on the man cave if you know anyone there. Uh, just text them and see if, if they're available to do that too, okay? So, uh, Girls Lagoon, uh, not the girls, not it, well, it was called the Girls Lagoon, but it's now the Pravi Puff Girls. Their first episode will be out on Thursday, which means it'll be Thursday morning in the Western countries, and it'll be Thursday afternoon in, actually, it's not even Thursday morning, it's like Thursday pre dawn it's even before you wake up. But in the in the Asian countries, it'll be in uh, Thursday afternoon. So uh, I got the schedule a little bit wrong. I thought it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I was wrong. It's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So Mondays is man cave. So remember, in Asia time, it's Monday afternoon, but Monday pre dawn in the Western countries. Uh, Tuesday is Love and Life. So you're going to see the next epi- the first episode of Love and Life come out this Tuesday. And, oh, that's today. It's actually today in the afternoon. So it's Tuesday afternoon uh, and Tuesday pre dawn for the Western countries. And then Pravi Puff Girls is going to be Thursday afternoon and then Thursday pre dawn for the Western countries. So it's Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Uh, Friday is going to be the prayer podcast. So Everyone, I hope you guys enjoy these brand new podcasts that are coming out. And uh, like I said yesterday, super excited because we are becoming a platform for many members from around the world to share their ideas, their thoughts. And I hope it's something that all of us can really uh, help each other out to with the things that we talk about also. Just like the Man Cave. Man Cave, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm so thankful you talked about this. I'm so thankful it's honest. And I think it is something that we should... um, really be thinking about at a different level saying that, you know what, it's good to be transparent about these things because a lot of people are struggling about the same things too, all right? And when the Pravi Puff Girls comes out on Thursday, I know you guys are going to enjoy that. And of course, today, Love and Life, that's going to be a brand new blessed couple. That's Aaron and Chelsea coming up with their first podcast this week. And I hope you guys will really, really enjoy that one too, all right? Uh, Pravicom is going to come out this week, right? Surprise, it's a video also. Just like Man Cave come out with a video, um, 
we're going to have the video come out for Provicom. So Provicom, the fourth installment, Chris Jansen over there in Minnesota is going to do uh, uh, some comedy. So go ahead, check it out on Saturday. All right. So, you know, there's something I was checking out some uh, IG, IG stories. And, you know, there's like a ton of IG stories from everywhere, you know, and uh, I came upon this clip of a member talking about their favorite movie was Aladdin. Not the old version, the new version, and I have a major gripe with this new generation, right? It's not their fault either, right? Because I know that they're not going to look back at these old movies, but, but, it's probably just me because I'm the older generation, but when I see people saying things like Marvel movies are the best movies ever, which is makes me want to vomit, or these new Disney versions of movies are their favorites. It makes me want to hurl, like throw up my intestines, you know, put it out, chop it up, you know, cook it up, and then feed it to dogs. And it just, it's just like, I don't understand. It makes me mad because the older version of the Disney movies, you know, the cartoon versions of Lion King, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, they cannot be compared with. They cannot. You can't compare. These new ones, the new Lion King, like the, you know, like the real, you know, real, real life live action, I guess, of uh, like Aladdin and Beauty and the, not Beauty and the Beast. It was um, Aladdin, Lion King, and now I believe Little Mermaid's coming out. Boo! Boo! I don't want to even watch it, right? The re the new ones don't do any justice to it, and they start to trying to get, like, really woke with the, the new... Vi especially Disney's super woke right now. But the new ones, garbage compared to the old versions. That is my hot take for the day. The new Disney movies are garbage compared to the cartoons. That is my hot take. If you have something to say about it, go ahead and say it because I don't mind. I'm just saying this as a disgruntled old person saying that the old stuff is better than new. And that's what old people do, right? But I'm just saying that I, 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 I don't think you can compare them. You guys can bring it up to me. This is just my opinion, my hot take. New Disney movies, Marvel, yeah, it's entertaining, but they're not the best movies ever. Marvel's just entertaining. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Like, I would say that, uh, yeah, some, the Avengers Endgame, like, some of those are really good. I really enjoyed them, but they're not the best movies ever. Good gosh. Like, you're going to compare them to, like, The Godfather. You're going to compare, like, even for me, like, the ones that I found, like, superbly entertaining in the past was, like, the Indiana Jones trilogy, uh, Back to the Future trilogy, you're looking at, you know, the older, the ones that I know are uh, a little bit different. And um, good movies is not so much about action. Good movies is about the act, the acting. Good movies is about the storyline. And the good movies, it has to kind of initiate or it has to make you feel something. Like really strong, right? But either way, so that's just my take, guys. I'm not, uh, I, you know, I'm not saying that everyone is bad. I'm not saying if you, and if you, even if you like those movies, I'm not saying that you're, you know, that it's bad. I'm just saying that your, your, um, uh, your opinions are garbage. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that I prefer the older ones, right? They were really, really good. The new ones, yeah, yeah. Right, I, I don't, I don't think you can compare. I don't think like even the Rocky movies were so amazing, right? Even the the newest one, up the Creed movie, Creed Three, ah, wasn't that good? It wasn't that good? It was just kind of like one of those. I was trying to be a feel good movie. It wasn't that good at all. The only one that I thought was quite entertaining and pretty good and emotional too was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. I was super surprised by that one. If there was any movie that I would say recommend you to go out watch right now, it would be Guardians of the Galaxy Three. Right, I like John, you know, Top Gun, John Wick, uh, four, right, and you know, those are more action movies. And then, you know, Guardians, Ga Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of like an action movie too. But uh, I just, I thought that was very well made. It was very well made in, in all different areas. So if I were to give a recommendation, Guardians of the Galaxy three, uh, I was expecting junk, honestly, because it's a Marvel movie. But I can't help but go watch Marvel movies because you know I was I grew up in the era where you had the comics to these movies. I had the Iron Man comic books. I had the Daredevil, a uh, Hulk, uh, X Men, Wolverine, right? All like Thor. We had I had all these comic books too. So it's kind of interesting to see how they make it into real life, real live action. But uh, uh, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy was surprising. 
I, I'm gonna have to say I for me it was worth it. I went out to watch it uh, opening weekend by myself and I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, you know it, it was it was it was so weird for me watching Guardians of the Galaxy because um. I wasn't expecting much, and I thought like the the humor was going to become corny again. And when it was pretty funny, I was like, "Ha ha ha! Oh, that's pretty funny." Because you know, you know, you're, you're trying to like prepare yourself for really bad jokes. But I was like, "Hey, actually, this is pretty good." And uh, it, it it ended up being a really good storyline too. So either way, uh, you know what happened on uh, Mother's Day? This is something I didn't bring up uh, yesterday. You know what happened on Mother's Day? Quite interesting. So, well, this is not the interesting part. After we had that, that steak dinner with my mom and, uh, you know, our family was together, I went home and I just had major food coma, fell asleep for like three hours. And then I woke up at like 10.30 p.m. Then I, you know, showered up, did everything, then I went to, went to bed again. But I don't know why it was the worst food coma ever. But uh, something happened during our Mother's Day dinner. And I, I thought it was quite uh, insp- moving. I was very moved by it. So during dinner... Uh, there was uh, another couple having dinner like across from us. And as we're talking, having fun time with our, you know, you know, just our family, you know, Mother's Day dinner. Uh, when they were leaving, the mother stops at our table and uh, she just went to my mom and said how blessed she was. And she was so thankful to see like this family together and, it said, and she said it reminds her of her family in the past. So I was like, oh, so most likely, you know, obviously what happens is your, you know, families, um, you know, your children get married and then they have their children. Then they have their own Mother's Day events. And, you know, it was just her and her husband on Mother's Day kind of thing, right? And she was just very thankful and she was like saying things that uh like you know she i I, she was definitely a person of faith because she talked about oh i pray for you and uh i you know you guys are so blessed and she was you know she was just so happy to see a family together and i think because she had faith one thing that i thought about is she probably saw us praying together at the beginning Right, because at the beginning of our meal, you know, uh, you know, I, I prayed for the meal. It's kind of funny because you know we're all fighting over who's gonna pray. Not fighting over, fighting over who doesn't want to pray. We're like, no, I don't want to do it. No, you do it, right? And then my brother's like, it's Mother's Day. Let her choose. And she's like, the youngest. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you, mom. Right? And then I prayed for it. But um, I think for people of faith, I think that's it's it's quite. Uh, I think it's something that's inspiring to other people too to see people of faith or families of faith coming together, praying together for their food, and you know just having the whole family. Like I doubt this woman knew the ages of me and my brother, right? Because when I asked her, I was like going, "Oh, you're, so your children are all married?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, our children are married." And uh, interesting is even when I talked to my mom. I was asking my mom what her friends were doing for Mother's Day. You know, they're a lot older in like their 70s and 80s and stuff. And they're like going, oh, you know, our, our children just uh, give us money and then they do their thing. And I was like, oh, really? And I thought to myself, and she's like going, yeah, and all her friends are very like, uh, uh, not jealous, but they're envious because it's like, and of course, because me and my brother aren't married, but it's just more of like, oh, that's so that's so awesome that you're having dinner with your family together. So uh, I think that's something for a lot of you guys out there, just knowing that uh, more than the money, giving money and all those other different things, sometimes parents just want to be with their kids, right? And I know it's a little bit harder when you have like family and stuff, but I do think it's something that we should think about also is, you know, sometimes with their parents, they just want just they just want us to be there and that's enough for them. Like it was Mother's Day uh, and my mom went to church and she says, she says she'll be back by five. My brother comes over early, but in the fridge, there's like these, uh, she made this appetizer of like shrimp with like cucumber, onions and endives and stuff like that. It was so good. But I'm like going, Mom, it's Mother's Day. Why would you want to cook, right? But we went there together. Then after we went to get some ice cream, and then we spent time at the house. But it was it was quite, uh, I thought to myself, is yeah, that's something I think parents want more is the presence of their children more than just, oh, you know, uh, here's some money, have a good Mother's Day type of thing, right? So that is something I do think is uh, something we should think about when it comes to our future also. Uh, oh, interesting question in the comments section. I, I thought this was quite interesting one. Uh, and of course this question is, is good today because today we're going to have love and life with Aaron and Chelsea in the afternoon. Right. But, uh, the question is about marriage is like these days, um, there's a leader, uh, the leader, 
told me that if people in desperate situations to get married, they can marry to people not in Providence. And there is no difference comparing with the Blessed Family. But I feel like the leader is encouraging people to commit the fall. If I want to have opposite sex relationship, I can, I can just go out and find one. Why suddenly people can fulfill the purpose of creation in this way? In this situation, I feel like no, like not every leader is trustable, but I, I'm still curious about it. Does anyone know, uh, am I being cheated by the leaders? So uh, this is a really, really good question because it has to do with uh, the current situation that's happening right now in Providence in general. And I think this is why we have such programs now, like the Man Cave, because you know, we want more men. We need more males in this history. We need to understand the history a lot better. There's just so many things where the ratio between guys and girls is really small. So the first question is, you know, are you really being cheated? And the answer is, mm, I don't, leaders are not out there to cheat people, you know, because, you know, that's their church. They want their church to do really, really well. So from the leader's perspective, I don't think they're trying to cheat anyone, right? It does sound a little bit weird. Why? Because you're like, wait a second, that's totally not how marriage is supposed to happen in Providence. Oh my gosh, is this wrong? And I think it's great that you ask the, I think it's great that you ask the question itself, right? And the one thing we do need to know is the situation we're in right now is very, un it's unprecedented. We've just never gone through this before where in the past, the ratio between males and females has not been this bad, right? And why is it like all of a sudden, you know, I'm sure some of you guys, uh, maybe not in campus and not in uh, SS will know this, but from, you know, from the youth or career department and above, we've all, we've already heard from like a year, two years ago, it's like, hey, we got to focus on male evangelism, right? And it's obvious why we're focusing on it. So a lot of you guys out there listening to this, I know you're very mature anyway, so I'm just going to speak candidly about this, right? We know the situation, there's just not enough guys. And if there's not enough guys, then the biggest place you're going to see where, the biggest uh, situation where we're going to see this disparity is during the blessing, when, you know, when we're getting married. And one thing we also know about uh, Providence is uh, the vast majority of people in Providence will get married. Like I would say over 90%, right? And some people might say to me, like, like, oh, but stars, see, there's so many stars. And the answer is no, there's not. So if you know, like, if, if you know, like, the percentage of stars in your, well, actually, stars in a, in a smaller country might be different. But if you look at overall, it's probably like one to two percent, maybe three or four, maybe, like, of the total. And the only reason there's going to be a, such a huge disparity is if you're in a country that doesn't have a lot of people. And if you don't have a lot of people, it's probably going to be like, um, like any, any countries that are like under 500, 500, maybe even under a thousand might see a little bit more, a bigger disparity, like, um, more stars in it. Right. But you know how Providence is the stars are the ones running full time. They're usually the head leaders, the leaders, the IMD, the HQs and stuff like that, because you know, that's what they gave up, you know, they sacrificed for. So if they're in that position, you're going to see them on the screen the most. So it almost looks like stars are everywhere, but they're not. It just feels like it. There's just like the out of the total, it's not a lot, right? So uh, what is happening? What does it mean? Like people are, are telling uh, some people like in, in the member, this is country by country. They're doing it differently. Every country. And that's why you can't really judge it on another country. Every country has a basic guideline of how they should be doing things. And yeah, like I said, already people in the career departments have already heard, like, we got to go out and evangelize more guys. And we all know why, right? So country to country, it's going to be different too, because the ratios could be different also. So imagine you have a difference of, let's say, a country that's uh, two to one, like two, two girls for every guy compared to a country with five to one is completely different, right? Because if it's two to one, it basically means that um, you have a 50, there's a 50% chance of getting married. But if you're at a place five to one, you have a 20% chance, right? So I think um, your country... Each of your countries are going to have a different way of doing this or finding uh, the method of doing it. And that's something that we have to adhere to, knowing that every country is in a different situation than the other. We are, right? And if we're going to be very, very mature about this, one thing that we really have to do well is to be flexible, right? The one thing I know about God is God is flexible depending on the situation and circumstance. How do I know? Because think about it. There, even with the Messiah, there's the path of glory and the path of affliction. And what's it based on? It's based on what do people do with their free will? right? That's the thing. What do people do with their free will is going to determine different paths. And even in the path of the cross or even in the path of glory, there's going to be multiple levels 
of how well or how well it doesn't go within those two paths. God is very flexible about this because he knows that everyone has free will or, you know, free will meaning some people can choose not to believe in this history. Some people can choose not to go out and evangelize. Some people can choose not to contribute to the church. There's so many different reasons that can go out there. Every individual, every church makes decisions based on the word. However, because of free will, uh, sometimes we may not reach the most ideal situation of the will. It may not follow the A-level will, right? Like I just said, path of the cross, path of glory, or, you know, God wants all people to be saved, but it's also dependent upon if people choose to. That's their own free will if they all get saved or not, right? Right now, too, obviously God wants everyone to be happy. God wants, you know, those who want to get married, God wants all of them to get married, too, and he wants them to find their perfect match, right? But, because of the situation we're currently in, we need to be a bit more flexible about it, right? So, you know, some people, if you think about flexible, meaning that if we're in a situation right now, and let's just say the, you know, the guy to girl ratio is completely off, right? It's really, really hard. Would you say the best thing is, hey, uh, tough luck, tough luck. I know you want to get married. Tough luck, not of guys. That's not even your fault, Right? That's not even your fault. Like, you'd be a little bit different if there's enough guys or more than enough guys, but then the guys don't want to marry you because of your character or whatever it is. That's completely different. But this is this is of not of someone's fault. Like, oh, there's not enough guys. You no, know, so does that mean, like, would it, would it be, should we be that inflexible to say, oh, tough luck. Oh, you got messed up. You couldn't find someone. Oh, and some people are like, this is my fourth blessing. And I'm like, man, you must really be bad to still be in your fourth. No, it's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just not enough guys, right? So if we become super strict, then what happens is it causes people to, you know, to get hurt. It causes people to feel unloved. It causes people to, you know, and, and it might even, I think it will. It will cause people eventually to leave, Right. And, you know, if you really want to get married, but you can't find someone here and you go out and then you feel guilty because you've married someone outside and then, then you're going to be like, oh, I, I really want to be in this history, but look what I've done. I feel so ashamed. Yeah, that's going to make things even worse, right? What is the, what is the best way? Is, you can't be so strict about it when there is free will, when people have choice, when people don't fulfill responsibilities, Right? Like, I would say it's partly our fault because we didn't evangelize enough, right? We just didn't. We didn't evangelize enough, and that's why we're in this predicament right now. We didn't do well enough, and that's why we're in this predicament, right? So, you know, if we're just, if you're not flexible, it's just going to be like, oh, tough luck. No, people are going to get hurt. People are going to leave, right? We have to understand this is our situation. How are we going to deal with this, Right? Think about God's situation. God forbid he sends a Messiah so everyone can be saved, but he still thinks about, but people may not accept him. He doesn't want it, but people have free will, right? In the same way too, we're, we've come to the point that we're at the crossroads of this situation where there's just not enough guys, right? And you could be strict about it and say tough luck, or, you know, like I, I know some people, some leaders might say to them, oh, then... Just, it's okay. You don't need to get married. Just live with the Lord. And you're like, no, that's really? Like, that's that's what you're going to say to someone? I think that's one of the worst things to say to someone. Oh, just live by yourself. No. M marriage is like, like, you know, we all heard this, you know, pr fulfilling the purpose of creation. So you have three options. If you could just keep waiting for the next blessing and the next blessing and the next blessing. Or you don't get married. Or... Um, in this extreme situation we're in right now, we have to be more flexible, which sometimes means uh, finding someone on the outside. Now, what does that mean? Now, when we say finding someone on the outside or dating and stuff like that, I think that's going to be a, a misperception. A mis like people are going to misunderstand that because it's not saying go out and just start dating a ton, ton of people, right? Uh, what is ideal? I think you meet, you know, it's, uh, it's evangelizing, you know, going out, finding someone to come into this history, Right? So, you know, one thing we do know is you can't just open the door and say, everyone, run into the fields like, you know, like calves released from the stall. Go and find your husbands. No, it's not like that. You know, it's, there's always going to be guidelines. There's going to be guidelines. What's the best way to do it? Because we want to do it the right, proper way. There has, it has to be done in an orderly way. It's not just a free-for-all and everyone just go out and do whatever you want like the world. No, there's an orderly way that we have to do it. 
This is not ideal. It's not the best way. We have to be flexible about the situation we're actually in, but we have to do it in an orderly way with guidelines on how to do it, right? And this, and of course, the biggest implication is uh, that we, whoever we find, we should have the goal to evangelize them, right? We're not here to marry people of the world. You know, that's going to be a very, very difficult thing. But, you know, the goal is to evangelize, right? So, and I, I think it's not just for their sake to save someone, but also for your sake. Because, you know, is it really easy to be with someone who doesn't believe in providence, right? Doesn't, you know, doesn't want to raise their, their raise the kids in the, in the level of providence and stuff. So I do think it's, it's a very, very big thing that people have to think about deeply, but also understanding the full situation, right? This is our, this is the reality of what's in providence right now. How are we going to deal with it? And uh, it's def the way that I've seen Sunseem all my life. Uh, he is not like, that's it. You're done. Get out kind of thing, right? It's very, very flexible. Flexible meaning that uh, sometimes there's a certain situation. You just can't help it, right? That we need to find another way that's going to work. And I think that is something that uh, we also have to realize is, uh, yeah, there is an ideal way. However, if responsibilities, if we haven't done what we're supposed to do, we didn't evangelize enough guys, whatever it is, then we have to find another way, right? We have to find another way and be flexible about it. The only thing I would say is, like, I'm telling you guys all right now, this is not Pastor Sky condoning you all going out and dating. I'm not saying anything like that. Every country is different. Talk to your leaders. Get details, do not just hear it once and say, oh my gosh, and then all of a sudden you feel like emotional about it and you have a reaction. No, no, don't do it that way. Do it in a way where it's like, okay, so here's some, here's some of the information that I've got. Now the next thing for me to do is to ask questions and get more details about it, right? Like what, what, like what are the details? Like, you know, that's why, you know, that's probably why you wrote the comment. You want to find more details. Like, oh, so are you saying this? And the answer, and then we're going to be like, oh, well, this is what, you know, Sunseem said in this situation, da, 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 right? But what about this? Ah, we're not saying go out and just like, you know, commit the fall. We're not saying that at all. We're saying that these are the guidelines. These are the things that we have to think about. And this is the level that we're going out to, to, to do it this way, right? And when you think about it that way, then you'll slowly get an idea of the direction and the guidelines. And each, like I said, each country is different because each country has different cultures, and each country also has like different situation, like some countries are two to one, some are two and a half to one, three and a half to one, whatever it is. And each country has to, to really think about, discuss it together. And they're going to have these guidelines set out so that people, you know, are not going to be unhappy, right? But that they can fulfill the purpose of creation, maybe not in the most ideal way, but it'll be done in a way um, that will be approved by this history, will be approved by God kind of thing, right? So, um, one thing, like I said, it's, we just got to be flexible in our hearts and our minds. Uh, and we will understand it better when we realize the situation we're in. And then we also need to get more details and ask a lot of questions. But I understand why it's happening this way. I just, I really do. It's happening this way because that's the situation we're in right now. Either way, all right? So if you guys have any more questions about this, go ahead and leave, uh, leave it in the comments. But if this helps, you know, I hope it, it helps you guys out. But like, I, I can't speak for every country. Talk to your HQs, talk to your head leaders, uh, discuss with them what it actually means. And uh, then you'll get a better idea for your country. Each country should not do it the same because they're all in different situations. So that's why I can't even lay out like the basic way of doing it because every country is different. Either way, okay? So very, very good question. And I think that's something that is on a lot of people's minds too. And uh, I hope it's something that we can all think about at a much deeper and greater level also, okay? So we're gonna get into our first break and then after we'll go into the practical word study. <laughs>
right, so let's get into today's uh, practical word study. And I know that a lot of people look forward to this too because I know a lot of times we're trying to figure out what is the best way for us to uh, put the words of God into action for this week. Great message this week and about having absolute faith is life, right? And um, the first thing that I thought was a very practical thing and something that may I think a lot of people could be struggling with is uh, not so much the prayer time. Um, cause you know, we're in, we're, we're in the 70 day prayer condition of repentance right now. We're repenting for so many things, right? It's a time to get rid of the mess, rid of the clutter, rid of the sin that holds us down. Uh, the sin that allows sent a Satan to enter into our hearts. But one of the things that was mentioned twice in this, um, this week's message, I thought, uh, was about how we treat our brothers and sisters, regardless of what side they're on. And the big thing is, you know, don't talk bad about people, but forgive them. Forgive those who have come against us, right? Don't hold grudges. Don't hold resentment. And I would say that this is a very, very difficult thing to deal with is forgiving those that have come against us, come against Sunsim, right? Come against the people that we love. And then they've said some things and brought people out of, like, we're like, wow, how can these people ever? And we have this, this animosity or sometimes hatred towards these people too. But, you know, over the last couple of weeks, the message has always been forgive them, forgive them right? And we have to kind of get into our heads is, wait a second, what do you like forgive them? That's how can you forgive people like that? And if anything, the first thing that we have to understand is we are going to forgive them not because, you know, it's like, hey, it's the right thing to do. That's not it. Got to think about last week's message is we do it because that is God's will, right? This is what God wants from us is to forgive even our enemies, right? And of course, this history would be better, right? Even if just one of those people who left came back, this history would be better. Whoops, sorry, I just uh, knocked over my mic, right? Uh, this history would be better even if just one person came back. And I think one of the things for uh, this week's um, uh, practical word study is, you know, realizing what God, what is God's will? What does God really want when it comes to us and these people who came against us and said these nasty things or took people out of providence too. Like, what, what does God want? And if you look at God's deep shimjung, when it comes to the words, when it comes to uh, the Bible, it's like, look at, the, look at the history of the Bible. How many times the people of God went against him? How many times they worshiped idols, killed their own people, killed the people of God, killed the prophets, killed the ones that were sent? And yet, even after all those terrible things that these people did, God still wanted them back. He still, he still forgave them, even for the most, even breaking the number one commandment, right? Is there, shall, you know, you shall have no other gods before you. But these people broke number one, the biggest and greatest one. And even then, he still took them back, right? And this is kind of like where we have to realize the deep shimjong of God, and this is what God truly, truly wants, right? It's not about what I want. It's not what about I think. As people of God, we're always trying to figure out what is God's will, right? Now, harder part is how do we repent for people like this that we don't really love very much? And I'm, I'm saying it in a good way. Like I'm saying it in a good way of, yeah, we don't really love them that much, but it's more like we hate, some people like hate these people on the other side. So a couple things is, let's take a look at um, some, how do we re repent for these people that are our enemies? And of course, let's take a look at a couple Bible verses that will help us to kind of see clearly of what God wants. So Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 46, he said, you have heard that it was, that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, which is a situation right now, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. How much more would it be for the brides of heaven? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be brides of your Father in heaven. Right? That's one of the things that we are called to be. Brides are soft brides are elegant brides are loving right and we have to be doing the thing that our our husbands want right and in this you know and i'm not just saying this in a misogynistic way like do whatever your husband wants no because your husband's going to do what um the wife wants too it's, it's reciprocal right how do i know it's reciprocal because god says pray and i'll give it to you so you're seeing that it's not just a one-way it's a two-way thing right second verse i'd bring up 
would be First Timothy chapter two, verse four to six, where where God where where uh, Paul says God wants everyone to be saved and to fully understand the truth. There is only one God. And there's only one way that people can reach God, and that way is through Christ Jesus, who as a man gave himself to pay for you know, everyone to be free, right? God wants everyone to be saved and fully understand. We have to fully understand from God's perspective, God's point of view, right? And when we, understand, we start to understand this a little bit more deeply, we'll start to realize it's no longer about what I feel. It's about what does God want? What is God's will? To understand that deep shimjong, and understand the heart that you need to have, which is not easy in this situation, what must we do? And the thing that I talked about in this week's message, if you really want to do this well, you need to pray with an earnest heart. Pray, don't just pray with an earnest heart. Just pray so that God can give you the heart to forgive. Pray that the Holy Spirit can inspire you so you understand what is going on. Remember, we're not called to judge anyone. We're called to save. Just like Jesus. Jesus said, I didn't come to judge. I came to save. Just like the man of mission. It's, everything is done to save people. Right? Our hearts should be so deep that it's about saving, not condemning, not saying they don't deserve it because then you put yourself in the position of a judge. No one can say, this person doesn't deserve God. This person doesn't deserve salvation. That is up to God and not us. Now, what does God want to see? God wants to see us uplifting, encouraging, praying for each other, forgiving each other, right? And that's something that I, I do think is going to be a big thing for us when it comes to this week's messages. This week's, putting this week's word into, into practice, yeah, pray for them, forgive them. You know, a lot of times, we don't even know the full situation, what's actually going on, and that's why we have to understand it at that deeper level too, Okay. The second thing I think that was a very, very good suggestion is uh, in order for us to remember the past, we have to start sharing those stories again, right? The stories of, of you and God in this history, right? We got to share those stories. So when you share those stories, you realize, wow, God, you were with me back then. God, you were with me back then too, right? So let me share a story uh, between me and God also being in this history where I was uh, in South Africa. We were in... Um, we were preaching to uh, the medical department, which is kind of crazy. You know, we're at, no, not kind of, I'll tell you why it's crazy for me. It's because when I was preparing for my, when I was preparing to speak to this department, which I didn't know at that time, during my preparation, the Holy Spirit inspires my heart and tells, you know, basically says to me, you need to tonight go out and heal these people. Like physically heal them. And I'm just like, what? Like I've never done this before. And, you know, later I find out it's a medical department. I'm like, oh my gosh, like God, isn't that kind of, you know, you, know, you want me to start healing people with prayer to people who are learning how to heal people? Like, God, that's going to be really hard. And, and I, I was so nervous speaking to this group. And when I started to speak, I started, you know, I started talking about the fire of the word and how the fire comes into our hearts. And if you have that faith, then you can move mountains. You have that faith, that mustard seed type faith, and you can do anything, right? Then God will make miracles happen in your life. And, um, you know, I can see that the feeling in the room was really fiery and people were being inspired. But like 45 minutes in, all of a sudden, like I get this, I hear a voice in my heart, right? The Holy Spirit kind of says to me, do it now. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, like you want me to, what? Like you want me to heal? I'm like, come on. I'm like, oh, and I, I was frozen. Like, you really want me to do this? And she's like, do it now. And I sat there like, God, I'm going to do this. And I think this this pause I had, these thoughts I was having, it probably lasted for like two or three seconds. But obviously, you know that it feels like forever, right? It really does. And uh, I just sat there like, gosh. And the, I, 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 I was like, everyone close your eyes. And everyone closes their eyes. And I'm just like, if anyone wants to receive healing today, then come up to the front whether it's you, your family, whatever it is, come up to the front. And I'm going to be super honest with you guys. I was praying in my heart, please, God, let no one come up because I don't want to do this, right? And when I opened my eyes and I looked back, and I, I swear there's like 20 people up there, and I was like, God, this is crazy. 
And I was like, God, can can uh, you really want me to do this? And I I went to the first person in line. I was just like, Hey, uh, like how you know what can God do for you today? And um, she's like, My dad has cancer, and I was like. What? Right? And, uh, you know, I was kind of thinking to myself is like, you know, this is the first person, God, you know, you could have made it a bit easier. Right? You could have made it where it's someone who just has a backache, someone who's got like a sore muscles or something along that line. Where I'm like, what? You want me to start with cancer? And um, in my heart, I, I basically told God, uh, uh, I can't do this. I was like, "There's, I, God, I, I can't, I can't do this," and there was no response from God, just an inspiration in my heart. You know, if you have mustard seed size faith, you can make miracles happen, and that verse came into my heart, but also a realization came with it: is, is it you that's doing the healing? And I thought to myself, like, "Ah, oh, no, it's actually no, God, you're doing it." Right, And God said to me in my heart, He's like, this is why you only need mustard seed size faith. What does that mean? It means that why is it, why this mustard seed is so small? Because the only thing I'm doing, I'm not doing the healing, it's all God. The only thing I do is to let God work through me. That's the small mustard seed thing I do and the rest is up to God. And I was like, all right. And then I started praying for these people one by one by one by one by one. And I think it was like another hour went by and we finished everything and everyone was like, you know, all the members came together. We're like, wow, that's so amazing. What happened? Ah, and we're just all really, really thankful and grateful what ha you know, like that we went through this. And there is uh, this one girl that walked up and says, hey, uh, Missionary Sky, I want to talk to you. I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, you know, we you prayed for my grandmother who's like bedridden and, uh, you know, she can't, she can't get out of bed. And, you know, basically the doctor says, you know, she's going to die in bed, right? If she, you know, so, you know, we prayed for her grandmother during that time. But she said that after the prayer, she went straight to her room to call her grandma and... She says, I called my grandma, my mom picks up the phone, and I said, hey, how's grandma? And the mother said, she just got up and started doing the gardening. And we were all like, what? Like, it works. Like, oh my gosh. And we were so happy that at least one person out of the 20 were able to uh, receive, a, you know, receive healing from it, right? And was it me? No. It's me is the mustard seed that actually had the guts to just go out and do it, right? And the rest was up to God. And we have to give glory to God for those things too, right? It, there, was another, there was another guy who was a member. We prayed for his father uh, because the father was an alcoholic. That uh, they were gonna, he was, the father was going to get a divorce with the mother. And then this father also didn't believe in Jesus. And we prayed for that father too and uh, two months later when I was already in another country that member calls me and says Sky it happened I was like what remember when you prayed for the healing of my father number one is he stopped drinking alcohol number two is my parents are not getting divorced and number three is he started coming to church and you know that I was hearing these types of miracles and you know the reason I'm sharing this with you is because we need to share our stories Right? Share your stories of what God has done in your life. Share your stories. You're like, oh my goodness, that's so crazy. And that's a story between me and God. And when I see these stories, I'm like, yeah, that was me in this history going to evangelize. That was me in this history, believing in this history. And God made these types of miracles happen. And I really hope that, you know, all of us out there too can share those types of uh, stories with each other to remind ourselves of, the amazing things that God has done for us too. All right? So, you know, those are the two things that I thought would be good for the, the Practical Word Study. Hope you guys really enjoyed that, uh, which means let's get into our third, our second break.
how can it be explained? You can't express it, no matter what would you use, they're not enough. Your existence is love in itself, being with you each second, each hour, every single day. I want to talk of all things, even the small things, or thank you. I love you so much, can't keep it to myself. You are the reason I am living, I'm loving you, I live in you, yeah. Sometimes I feel like your heart is a dream, but this is far more real now than anything. When you're beside me, there's no one so close, there is no one else more precious to me. So let's get into our final segment for today, which is Pravi in the media. Just kind of give you, I'm going to give you guys some updates of uh, what has been happening as of late and kind of my thoughts on some, some of the things that are going on right now too. So um, I told you guys already that there's another lawyer that has stepped down from Sunseam's team. So at the, uh, at the moment, we don't, we're not really sure what the reasoning is why this person stepped down. Uh, but we do know that there's still four people on that defense team right now. So it's not like, the, you know, like Sun Team's left high and dry. So uh, that is one of the updates at the moment. Um, uh, in the, like, if we take a look at like the beginning, when we look at the, the situation with the lawyers and such and the law firms that we've had, uh, in the beginning, in March, after Netflix came out, um, the huge law firm that was working on Sun Team's case had to step out. Right, and I know a lot of people might be saying that oh, they 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 stepped out because they believe that Sunsi was guilty. It's not because of that. It's because of the public scrutiny and the public outcry. So the you know one thing we do know is like I don't say it's cancel culture, but it's kind of similar to it in Korea, and it's a bit more complex than it is here. So if the public um, if the public is against a certain person or some entity, uh, and then someone defends them in court, then the people will go against that group. Right, and basically they'll they'll lose their company because you know, no one wants to be defended by them, right? So now, um, you know, some people might say like, "Hey, but isn't that kind of crazy? Like, don't people have the right to be defended?" And the answer is they do have a right to be defended, but uh, the the law firms 
don't have to, you know, don't have to do it. It's the same with America too. However, the difference in America and let's say uh, Korea is uh, the defendant is entitled to a lawyer. Like they have to have someone no matter what, right? Like in the end, there's going to be someone there for them, right? And people can become, and, and in America, one of the big things about if you have a big pro, high profile case, you can become really famous from doing a big trial. And then it basically puts you on the map. Korean is a little bit different that you can just get canceled by the general public. And if you think about it, this law firm is not there to defend us, right? They're there to make money through, you know, lawyering. So, you know, it's not worth it to them if they're going to lose their company for this one trial, right? No matter how uh, right they think it is or how much they think Sun Seems is innocent, whatever it is, it doesn't make a difference, right? So, you know, they, they need to make sure that their company is still running. Now, so that was that's what happened with the the original uh, lawyers, uh, the big law firm, like one of the second or third largest, one of the top three law firms in Korea. So we lost them, right? Uh, then another lawyer we lost last month, right? And I think it's about last month. And that person was a member. And just from what I know, it had to do with a mistake that had to do with writing up a settlement, right? And which basically means, you know, settling means to do it outside of court. And I know that a lot of people might say like, oh, isn't, doesn't a settlement mean you are guilty and you want to settle outside? But I did talk about this a little bit before is a settlement is not, is that's one of the reasons is you're guilty. But there's multiple, multiple different reasons, right? It's, it's, and it's not, I don't think it's the right thing to do to assume it has to be that one answer, right? So let me give you a couple of other examples. Uh, settlements are actually encouraged in Korea and other parts of the world, including America. Uh, so that it doesn't have to go all the way to the court and use precious time, manpower, and money. And in oftentimes, even in the U.S., if you lose in court, your punishment will be higher for using the court's time and money. And that's why they want, a lot of times, it's better to uh, settle outside of court. A second reason why people settle outside of court is because the money incurred in that trial is greater than the actual loss or win, right? So let's just say that... Um, you win a trial and you win like $2 million, but then guess what? The, the, cost for, uh, uh, the cost for lawyering and stuff is way more expensive than that. And some people are like, we don't want to spend all this money on this. So let's just settle outside of court, right? The third reason uh, would be, or the fourth one, because the, the one is to be if you're guilty, right? Uh, the chances of losing the trial is high. Not because you're guilty, but because of the way the trial is going, right? The way that, like, you can have really, really good, good lawyers on the other side with good evidence or whatever it is. That if the chances of losing the trial is super high, people don't want to go deeper into it. Uh, and they want, uh, they'll probably settle outside of court. So these are just four of the different reasons why people would settle outside of court. And of course, Sunseam wants none of it. And that's why uh, we lost, that's why there was another person that was uh, let go. Uh, from the trial. I believe that was a member too. And the most recent lawyer leaving is for unknown reasons. Uh, like we don't know yet. Like there's been nothing in the news. I haven't heard anything on the grapevine either. And uh, you know, later we're going to find out the reasoning is later. We don't know right now. But just to let you know, once again, Sunseam's defense team is at four people right now. So please pray for the defense team uh, to be able to do well. Okay. Uh, and in other news, of course, we know that uh, all the accomplices, like, uh, like you know, we know that KJS is in detention right now, uh, waiting for her trial, which is going to start next uh, next month in June. I forget what the date was, maybe June 13th or something along that line. And that's going to be for all the accomplices. So there's going to be multiple people on the stand, about, about eight, I believe, right? And uh, the news just reported that uh, KJS sent a letter from the prison to members, and the content came out, the actual letters there. Right, and in the in the news article it says embarrassing content written by KJS, right? Uh, so, just a couple of the the situation that we know what's happening on April twentieth, um, KJS was moved to a small room with about five people in it. If you guys have seen the movie um, Miracle in Miracle at Number Seven, Cell Block Seven. Right, it's a Korean movie. It, you kind of see what the prisons are like. You have a room. And there's multiple people inside that room too, uh, and KJS is the eldest person in that room. And uh, according to reports, uh, this just happened maybe yesterday, the day before. Uh, KJS sent a handwritten letter uh, claiming innocence to uh, church officials. Uh, 
church officials and this this came out in the news and in the letter like there's like comments in there that KJS said like I'm doing well I'm eating three meals a day I'll try to work hard in the trial that will be held in the future it will be a tough fight because I have to prove my innocence and show the life I have lived Uh, also um, she wrote in the letter uh, that her thoughts were complicated her mind was confused because of the feelings of being there like inside the prison right but through the process she said she came to find the root of Jesus again and she is enriched mentally and spiritually right so you know uh you know when i when i hear some of this like i'm not telling you the whole article because a lot of it is really really negative and um i was thinking about this a lot i i think it's i think it's very easy for us to look at this uh report of all these negative like it talks about the letter being embarrassing because one of the things it does talk about is like, she never talks about the victim. She only talks about her cat. Like, Oh, she's someone who only cares about animals more than people kind of thing. So for me is, you know, it's easy to be suckered in by these news reports because it shows KJ is in a bad light. And of course she's against us kind of thing. But we also know that this same media says many bad things and misperceives and misunderstands Sunseam too. So I, I do think that we have to watch ourselves that it would be disingenuous for us to say that whenever the media talks about Sunseam, it's bad. But when they talk about people we, we don't like, then it's good, right? I think we can't be hypocritical in that area. And I, I think it's just better for us to know uh, that this is how media treats everyone they don't like. It's very unfair. Like, uh, even for me, I'm just like, what if it's just a letter to people in the church just to say she's doing fine? Like, people can't write those types of letters, but because it's a high-profile case, I'll dissect it, right? And this is something they've already been doing to Sunseam, too. And personally, I don't really feel happy about it, about any of this going on, right? And some people might say, oh, you know, Sky, don't be a sympathizer to KJS, right? And I'm like, well, you call me all I want, but, you know, I feel bad for her in this situation, too. It's a, it's a terrible situation. And, you know, for me, it's like, I can't just throw away friendship like we've had for a long time. Like, I'm not saying that we're, you know, like, that we're, like, buddy-buddy right now. But I'm just like, yeah, we've had, we've been friends. You can't just throw that stuff away, right? And if you really, really think about it, this situation all together, it looks, anything that looks bad on her looks bad on us too, right? Because she was number two. And the media, the way the media reports, they're reporting that she's still number two, like, inside the church. Which means there's a lot of things that the, the media don't know what's going on internally, And um, it's either they're not reporting, she has disconnected herself from Pravi and she's moved on, or they're refusing to do it, right? Or or, or maybe they don't even know, right? They're either not reporting it or they maybe they just don't know about it because the way they report about it is like she is still part of it kind of thing, right? Like she's like, she's actually writing letters to like the, the HQ of us right now, but she's actually writing to the people inside her, uh, you know, in, in her contingent and stuff too. So it is something that I, I think we have to think deeply about. Because, you know, even when I talk about some of the things that were talked about, like Shincheonji and the way they treat Shincheonji in Korea, like regardless of whether we agree with Shincheonji or not, uh, the, the bigger issue is this is how they're being treated. And if they're being treated unfairly, you have to call it out. Like, oh, that's unfair. Even though I don't agree with these people, they shouldn't be treated unfairly, Right. And I think that's why, you know, we have to really think about it deeply of the things that we're hearing. And that has to do with this week's message of not speaking ill about other people, not saying bad things about other people, even though we may not agree with them, right? And when I think about this entire situation altogether, like, you know, it's this week's message where the disciples are on the boat. The winds and waves are gearing up. And it's just, it feels like it's getting worse and worse. And the winds are getting stronger and the waves are getting higher. And at that moment, the disciples cried out to Jesus and they asked him to save them, right? And, you know, the greatest miracle happened at that time where the the winds and the waves, they all calmed down because Jesus said so. And I think it's the same thing for us right now is looking at the situation, how bad it feels. Oh my gosh, another lawyer. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh my gosh, what, what? And we hear all these news and we're freaking out. But the thing is, with that story in this week's message, if we too, in, in the moment, in the darkest moment, in the time where the winds and waves, we feel like we're going to get, we're going to drown. We need to call out to God, Right? And the greatest miracle is going to happen. And it's going to be the same thing. We're going to say, who 
is this person that even the winds and the waves listen to them, right? And it's going to be the same thing that we talk about even from before 2023 is wait until the end of 2023, right? This is the year we all, we all understood would be difficult and we all have to make it until the end. So hold on, hold on to the boat. Know that we're in for a rough ride. Just wait for the results of this trial, then the appeal, then the Supreme Court, Netflix season two, all of that is coming out. But for us, if we believe in this history, we've got trust in God in this situation. We have to trust Jesus to take care of the situation. We have to trust that they're working through the man of mission and they will take care of him too. At this moment, the ending doesn't look very good. Like we, we can't even figure out how is this going to end. But in the end, what we do know is that in the end, God will save his people. And more people will come to this history because of this situation. Just like billions have come to Christianity because of Jesus' conviction in trial and death on the cross. And that's something I, I do think that we have to keep that hope inside. Remember, you have to enjoy that hope while it's there. And there's a lot to be hopeful for right now. Yeah, some things we may not understand, but that's okay. Right now is a time for us to uh, hold on, wait for the end of 2023, and we're going to see some amazing things happen. And I hope that all of us too will really realize that this is a great time uh, that God is taking care of us each uh, even more than when it's normal. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is uh, the Pravi in the media. Uh, just kind of some updates and reports that we have uh, for this week. And of course, we have the trial coming up in the next few days. And I hope that all of us will continue to pray for the defense team, for the judges, prosecution, for Sunstein, and for uh, that, that things will happen according to God's will. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's podcast. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Have an amazing and awesome day. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the morning star drive 117.8 You're soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm